Yo guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of My Hero Academia. It is I, your spirit guide, sadistic bastard yokai, poppy wolf, back to bring you another episode of the My Hero Academia season five. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't know why I said the. <laughs> I'm really tired. Um, I've been working a lot. Um, yeah, so this episode is titled The Hellish Todoroki Family, and I'm see, my problem with the My Hero anime is that there's moments where it could speed through like some of the most um i wouldn't even say like th stuff that isn't narratively important or stuff that easily could be sped through and it still could convey the same emotion or still convey the same um the same point the same beats narratively and there's moments and there's moments like this in the anime where it really does take its time it allows the episode to build from beginning to end and it gives you the it doesn't hold you by the hand, but it definitely walks at a pace that you can follow and you can, you know, see where it's going. And it makes a nice callback to the, be the beginning of the episode. The I'm talking about the end of the episode, of course. The end of the episode calls back to the beginning of the episode and gives it a nice little twist, giving this nice little, like, um, beginning to end with, a, like, a hint of, like, then what's to come. It, it is an interesting um, episode. This episode, ult ultimately, um, I liked the beach episode. I think it was fun. I think it was important in the aspect of showing like this idea of like if you love something enough you will fight for it and when you enjoy life it gives you the inspiration to protect life i like those those messages you can take away from this like the one-off episodes the one-shot episodes but it's episodes like this that to progress the story narratively that allow character growth and even just um introduce us to you know things that could be possibly occurring sooner than later and I'm referring to the classic, um, you know what, at this point, I think everyone knows it and it, it, it's just going to drive me crazy if you like, if we pretend like it's not a thing, but it is a thing. So I'm, I'm not going to go into it uh, like that, but I will say what it means at this point in time with that, with what I'm going to refer to means. So let us just jump right in the episode. Um, what is happening here? Oh, sorry. It's, it's opening. Do not want it to open. Close this. Um, <clears throat> but as I was referring to, um, the episode begins with uh, uh, Endeavor. Um, he's you know the boys are. Uh, he's still teaching the boys that the, the same aspect of endurance building, understanding that when you're at the like it's one thing to like prepare. Like uh, the best way I put this, and the best way I can relate to this is when I used to work as a chef. Um, there's going to there's chefs who went to cooking school. And then she comes straight to uh, to a, a restaurant to work, and believe that they have this idea of like they've already been conditioned for this environment. And then there's somebody who's just naturally just done it, and he's been in the environment. He knows what he's talking about. Like he, like he might not have gone to the school to teach him, but he's already there, and that and alone has given him more experience than the person who went to cooking school. He has more endurance, he has more of a mental state that allows him to read the situations and everything that oh, uh, will come. And I think that's the the very same thing that Endeavor trying to impart onto the boys. He's trying to show them, look, you guys are talented. You guys are definitely like future big three. But the big difference is that you guys are lacking something that you need, that you really need to um, get from this kind of like student service or whatever it's called. It's endurance, experience, and being able to just um and go for yourself and understanding that yes you need to get stronger as the as the job continues every day you need to be better because guess what if it happens if you're slow one day someone dies there's a life on it's not like school where you can try again and there's no fatal consequences this is the real world of your work there are consequences and you need to be able to um prepare for them any way possible and you gotta you gotta really give it to endeavor he's really imparting that like highly highly well especially onto someone like um uh, deku um he's the one who's able to see it at least more clear than bakugo and todoroki um i want to talk about more where bakugo and todoroki are but i want to continue with endeavor because endeavor right now is my is probably the most significant character in this and it's probably the most fun to talk about honestly right now so as endeavor is you know trying to impart this wisdom onto the boys he kind of keeps battling himself with the ideas of what he's caused his family after a conversation with fumia he refers to a dream where he sees all his family except him and how like 
as much as that hurts, he feels like he deserves it. It's it's a very it's a very strong uh, play on his kind of his quirk idea. It's kind of a symbolism. Him his hell his hell is someone else's heaven, or like the hell the heaven that he wishes is a hell for himself as well. It is a very interesting concept that seeing his family happy together is the one thing that he wants, and the fact that it's without him hurts him. But he wishes he still wants them to be happy. It's a very it does does definitely hit hard. It makes him it makes Endeavor more fun to play with and more to dissect because there's so much more to him than just being a cruel bastard. There's so much to him being a piece of shit. Like in the first couple seasons, we don't like Endeavor. And this episode probably and especially the end of last season and this episode alone have probably made you go like dang, like I can I, it's hard to say if you could forgive Endeavor or not. It's really hard. He, he plays through the whole situation in his head with his rival with All Might, his relationship with his wife, his relationship with his own kids. And um, the one thing that I did find like a big takeaway is the idea of what it means to be the symbol of peace. Don't be All Might. Be Endeavor symbol of peace. Don't be the All Might symbol of peace. And I really like that for Endeavor being the Endeavor... Um, the Endeavor uh, symbol of peace is a very much combination of everything that both Bakugo, um, Bakugo, Deku, and Todoroki want as heroes. Kachan believes that if I want to be the best hero, I have to beat the villain. So that means I must be strong. Like a hero always beats the villain to save the day. While for Deku, it's a hero always saves the day, even if that means beating the villain. They're the same. They're the same ideal, but you come to it through different um, through different lanes. Me believing that by saving everyone, I will beat. I will in beating the villain. I, by saving everyone, that means I have to beat the villain. By beating the and then for Bakugo, it's by beating the villain. That means I've saved everyone. And for Todoroki, it's he walks that fine line. And it, I really think they're gonna really touch on this in the movie, especially the movie that's coming out this summer. That they're really gonna play on this aspect of like, all three of them have that belief. Like if I'm gonna be a great hero, I have to be able to overcome my not just my trauma like a, a hero is able to do both while Todoroki believes in both he believes that I must be the in order for me to be the best hero I have to defeat the villain and save everyone and I have the power to do so and it's kind of true he does the offense and defense qualities that Todoroki has is amazing Bakugo like the best way to put it is Bakugo is definitely an offensive uh, offensive fighter He's really quick. He's easy. He's able to maneuver. Like he's offensive up the butt. While Deku's more defensive. You can Deku can run support better than Bakugo, I would believe, and still um, get his shots in and get his wins in. While with Todoroki, he can do both. Todoroki honestly could do both. He has the power. The ice power is huge defense qualities, but he uses it for offense. The fire alone, he can somewhat use that make that smaller he can change the, the shapes of them giving it more um offensive qualities it's it's really interesting that all three of them are kind of like pokemon you know like the one's the attacker one's the defender and one's like the you know balanced out stats where you could probably use it the most um i want to talk about the characters now like where they're at in mind in in their minds because when it comes to the boys like i've already just talked about how their ideals are they get they the same ideals through different lanes but where are they at like at this point in time for Deku he's trying to learn from Endeavor like this endurance policy which really will help him understand his quirks better and able to use his quirks better because now with the endurance he's building from this job soon he will be able to gain like that the you know the, the very the, it goes back to the carnality he'll just have an instinct for doing this uh for do, using his quirks it'll be second nature to him he won't even have to think about uh, regulating the size and percentages it's just gonna be like that it's just gonna be natural for Bakugo, it's uh, understanding his speed and endurance too, and hopefully um, allowing him some humility. But at the same time too, his his head space is. Um, I'm very much like Endeavor. I was going down the same road as Endeavor, and I, if I want to surpass Endeavor, I have to be able to learn from his mistakes. Endeavor and Todoroki are very much the same type of hero. They very much believe that might makes right, and if they're the strongest hero that means and if they're the strongest hero if they're stronger than the, the villain then they'll be the strongest hero but sometimes that doesn't save the day and that's something that um endeavors learned and is literally like work better on while Kachan bakugo needs to you know i'm gonna call him by both names he really needs to be able to just observe that feel that read that and learn from that well for todoroki his biggest thing isn't following endeavors lead but it's 
use is it's learning from his father Enji. It's learning from Enji Todoroki, the father, not the hero, and how to use his quirk, allowing himself to be both be a, um, a Todoroki, a, but allowing himself to be both Ray and Enji's um, offspring. That's the big thing for him. It's understand that he has to be able to be both. He has to be able to learn like, to love himself and in turn love his quirk and and of course in bigger turn forgive his father and learn from his father and be able to forgive him not for his father's sake but for himself and i think that's the one thing that todoroki like bakugo um yeah deku touches on is like it seems like the reason why you're so conflicted is because you want to forgive him and they say that at dinner of course fumia who's bay's hell <laughs> invites uh this episode's gonna go long i'm sorry i have a lot to talk about um the, um, she invites them, the boys to dinner. They talk about conversations. Natsu still doesn't forgive uh, Endeavor. Endeavor's trying his hardest to like want to be father, and it's just not working. And he's just hoping that his dream isn't going to be forced upon him, and that he will eventually be able to be part of the family. That's what he wants. As much as he's happy seeing his family happy, he very much wants to at least try to be in the picture. And um, I think someone like Deku who's emotionally um, intelligent uh, really and along with of course being um, intelligent in other aspects as well but his emotional intelligence is very very um, comforting that he's able to now analyze Todoroki's actions and he's able to tell him like look bro I think the reason why you're you know kind of iffy about your dad is because you're trying to forgive him and you're you're preparing yourself to forgive him the only thing is you want to be able to um, be respected first before you even think about forgiving him and it's kind of like a real awakening for Todoroki because he kind of realizes like, oh my god I am going to forgive my dad and the conversation that you know can be heard by both Enji and um, Natsu who kind of understand the same boat well Natsu kind of understands he's like dude I want to forgive my dad I want to be able to love my dad it's, it's kind of like does any son really want to hate their dad Do you really just not want to love um the person you should be idolizing as funny enough most kids a bum, bum boy uh, idolize their own fathers as heroes so it, it does kind of um hit hard for natsu who wants to be able to see endeavor in that light he wants to be able to see his dad like that while for someone like todoroki he's again some he's very much used to be the middle point todoroki ironically being half and half is always the half and half um um point in these uh in these struggles he's ready to forgive not yet but he's preparing himself to Bumia very much is um she understands like dude i want to be mad at dad too i've i've been angry about the shit that's happened not having mom in her life but like i want our family back together i do and of course the episode ends with it, it just a lot of like talking points that really just the beats hit this episode that's all i'm gonna say like the beats really do hit but before i go into the overall episode i really do want to talk about this last scene because i feel like it com it can like the for the manga readers it definitely did feel like okay so what is there are they saying what are they saying but for like anime viewers i feel like you guys basically just got the whole like it hits you right away you already see what <laughs> i feel like you can already tell who it is anyways um we see um Endeavor walking with two plates and I was thinking to myself like why does he have two plates is he just gonna try to give it to Natsu what's going on no in fact he goes to the memorial of his first son his eldest son Koya Todoroki and he oh sorry let me just check my phone real quick I just I'm sorry, I'm sorry. uh sorry my buddy um uh let me just text him real quick so he's ready uh, I'm sorry <laughs> but um he definitely does Kind of touch on this point where it's just like he gives him he gives us on the bowl we see toy to we see who he looks like and i feel like it's safe to say like everyone who's not read the manga who's had this theory can kind of basically tell it, you guys know who that is i'm not even gonna say it but you know who he is toy to we all know who he is he looks you can tell by the eyes you can tell by the smile the face shape the hair like it's pretty obvious who toy to is <laughs> But it is something of heartwarming when he says he re he reiterates the same kind of speech of the dream he's always having on he says the only thing that was missing that would have made that even more special was you i think you deserve to be there more at that table toya and oh wow the feels guys the feels really do hit <laughs> i know this episode's long 
but it's gonna be long because this episode is it's it's, it's reawakened my love for my hero and stuff like this that really makes me enjoy my hero academia is when the episode is really really paced well it's really the beats hit everything hits and this is the moment this is the moment in the anime where they can do great things with the source material that just flushes it out even more so making us feel much more things wow like some episodes just feel a little lackluster and hopefully they they continue more on being able to pace out the the better beats and speed through the beats that don't need to be so emphasized that way we can get to the the meat and potatoes of the season faster because this season's a lot of people are jumping off ship and i'm you know i'm not jumping off ship because i know what's coming but for anime only watchers i could see where they can kind of feel like okay now this is dragging because season five by no means is going to be an a in my book it's probably going to be between a c and a b depending on how they you know they do the ending but yeah this is gonna be a longer episode i feel like i want to give my hero a longer episode because um i don't want to co i've been covering a lot, a lot of stuff and i've been just kind of swimming through it and i forgot why i love talking about like anime episodes but this is this is a 16 minute episode it's perfect we've run on long enough talking about the amazingness of this episode guys this episode's 10 out of 10 i really enjoyed it i really loved it i think it was a great episode up and down well paced beats all hit character growth everything the character um questioning amazing as well animation was it was fine it wasn't you know it was immaculable but it was fine but that being said guys it is i your spirit guide yokai with a sadistic sense of humor poppy wolf saying peace out peace and love and adios Bye bye